Hello again, everybody. It is Scott Casper. Takedown Wrestling continues our coverage of the sport of wrestling. This time, we get to recognize a friend of ours, somebody who has done so much for the sport of wrestling, and he continues to do that as the head coach at Bethany College in Lindsborg, Kansas. He joins us now, Larry Nugent. Larry, how are you? Scott, I'm doing great. I've had uh, my first cup of coffee. I think I'm, I think I'm coherent. Well, it was days ago, and by the way, today, sir, you are in the Nike hot seat, okay? So I just want to recognize our sponsor of this segment. Uh, it was days ago, Larry, that I got the, um, the email that uh, you would be honored for lifetime service to the sport and inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Saturday, April 30th, a little later on this year, uh, actually in another month or so. Uh, who, First of all, who called and told you that you were going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Uh, well, my uh, my mentor in in certain categories, uh, Doctor Mike Clock. Ah, Mike Clock called you. Yes. Now, you know, Mike, uh, I think uh, I think if you added him up, Mike has logged more international miles and has more friends. Oh well, domestically, of course, but internationally than anybody. Well, he certainly has our respect. That's for sure. And this is I want to make sure I'm I'm clear on this. In order to get to the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, you have to go through local or state chapters. So the Oregon chapter, National Wrestling Hall of Fame, has not only nom nominated you, but will honor you for that lifetime service to wrestling honor. And and it's because of your work. Now, let, let's just go through your work. Let's go back to you as a competitor. You earned All-American honors at Southern Oregon College. You continued your career in both freestyle and Greco for several years. You're one of only three Americans to defeat Get this now, Olympic and world champ John Smith in open competition. Does he talk to you? Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, you know, he stomped me quite a few times, Scott, so it's not like, uh, you know, I, I, it, it's embarrassing to have that put into the biography. <laughs> Most of this kind of thing is really hard to, uh, to talk about because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, you know, your introspective kind of thing, and that's sometimes hard, at least for me to talk about, but... You know, John. John did not have any trouble with uh, Larry Nugent. Don't worry about that. I did. I have to say that I'm. You know, not only uh, did I beat John in an open competition, but I beat one of the only other two Americans, uh, John Fisher. So you know, I was not a great wrestler, but I was in that group. That's a neat group to be in. I mean, it is rarefied air, and and I know the folks at uh, Southern Oregon. We're proud enough of you to name you a coach at Southern Oregon College as well. What was that like coaching at your alma mater? Oh, I tell you, it was, uh, it was so great. It was the biggest thing in town. You know, people say, do you want to be a small fish in a big bowl or a, a big fish in a small bowl? Well, I, I didn't really have much of a choice, but Bob Ream really made wrestling important in, in Ashland, Oregon. And I guess the peak of that was when we uh, put a team together that – won everything all year. We won every dual meet. We won every open. We beat Oregon State in Corvallis. We beat Oregon at our home. We won all those open tournaments in California. You know, all the best teams on the West Coast were in there. Quite quite a year uh, at Southern Oregon back in those days, and they still have quite a legacy. Was it difficult to leave? And I think the progression uh, from Southern Oregon went to Pacific University. Is that right? Yeah. You know, really, the, the rival... Uh, school for Southern Oregon was specific at the time. So, uh, you know, that was a challenge. And, uh, you know, I, I had to struggle uh, with that for just a little bit. But we ended up, uh, you know, Southern Oregon's a powerhouse, still is. and uh, But we beat them at home. Uh, and so that was kind of a satisfying thing. I guess I'm a little competitive, Scott. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you are. <laughs> I've actually shared a room with you. I understand how competitive <laughs> you are. I looked in the bathroom, all the towels were gone. Yeah. <laughs> so from Pacific University, you go to another prestigious university, this one, Brigham Young. And uh, that culture, obviously, very different. Um, what was it like coaching at Brigham Young? What was the culture there like? I loved it. It uh, a very structured place, you know. It's a kind of a, I guess you'd call it really a bureaucracy. And the thing I like about bureaucracies and institutions are that you can usually count on things. You know, there's there's not a lot of like a, a small college like I'm at now. You get surprised a lot. You know, you're because people are trying to uh, make things happen on that scale. They're 
there, you know, there's a lot of red tape and at least you can count on it. You know where it's at. I really liked it. And, and the athletes were fantastic. Uh, I've got great memories from BYU. Who was on your staff at Brigham Young? Well, it wasn't my staff. It was Mark Schultz staff. I'm sorry. Who was on? <laughs> and the great Mark Schultz was the head coach there. And he asked me to come in and, and help him. So and, for and I was, I was remiss in, in, in that, but, uh, Mark at the time, uh, you know, it was a tragic time for for the sport and for the Schultz family, and and I got to believe that uh, there was some some challenges uh, because that was after Dave was was killed, correct? That was right during it. I can tell you, Scott, that uh, I know the Fox Catcher movie came out and it was shown the way it was, but I was the one that opened the office door to see Mark sitting on the floor with the telephone and the blood on his hands from hitting the wall and. And uh, that was that was uh, that was a terrible to this day a terrible terrible time a terrible time indeed. Uh, Brigham Young University uh, was the final stop uh, prior to uh, your next destination. We'll get to that in a moment. We're talking with Larry Nugent, who's become a very good friend of ours over the last I don't know sixteen seventeen years I suppose. But he'll be inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Oregon chapter Saturday, April thirtieth. His plaque will proudly hang on the halls and the walls at the National Hall of Fame in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Let's move to your time as the Director of Development for USA Wrestling. You served in that position for some 13 years. For some, that's a lifetime. For you, did you get everything done you wanted to get done? No, 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 no. No, I didn't. I, I'm i proud that when I left, our uh, private donor support and corporate sponsorship was at the highest level USA Wrestling had ever had. Uh, but you know, it really wasn't enough. Uh, uh, the sport of wrestling deserves everything it can get. And, and, uh, there were, there were lots of ventures and opportunities that, you know, you, you just can't follow up on for, for one reason or another. And, uh, so, uh, fabulous, fabulous experience. It's a pretty fast paced situation there at USA wrestling. And, uh, although I, you know, push myself, uh, to, and even put pressure on myself in the position I have now, it was a little different kind there. A little different time. Yes. But, uh, I, I, there's a bit of a background on you. I know. And that is that while you were searching for funding for the future of the sport, you also have a tremendous appreciation for the history of the sport. As a matter of fact, you want, you have one of the greatest collections of video and film of, uh, that, that chronicles the sport. Um, where does that come from? Where does the, the fascination and the appreciation for the history of our sport come from? Uh, it's really a fascinating story, Sky. One probably not too many people even know. In my case, I, uh, I qualified for a team that went to Europe. And Dave Schultz was on that team. My brother was on that team. Bill Shear was on that team. And we were on a KLM flight uh, over the uh, Atlantic Ocean. And smoking was allowed at the time. And... Uh, so these re us wrestlers were worried about, you know, health and making weight and everything. And there were people smoking all around us. And this one American noticed this. And uh, he started rearranging the, the, uh, the, the, the seats. He knew like four or five languages. Fascinating guy. And he started moving everybody around and, and, and so that the uh, American wrestlers could sit where there wasn't smoke. Wow. And he got to be a fabulous friend. We had a great conversation there and became friends for years and years and years and years. And he really is responsible for uh, a big part of what we're talking about today. And he said, you know, he thought he had been uh, President Kennedy's liaison to Russia, Soviet Union, for the first uh, sports exchange ever. So he knew all the wrestlers. You know, track was one thing, but wrestling was so big there. He knew he knew uh, Yurigan. And he knew Medved. And so the conversation was great. And uh, he suggested that uh, one way to promote the sport is to make sure that people don't forget its history. And so that started me on this, this quest to, uh, to, to, uh, to bring as much of the history into the mind's eye of the, of the wrestling community as I could. I think that is actually a fascinating story. And in this day and age, if anybody tried to move ever, anybody from a seat, with or without a stewardess or pilot's uh, assistance, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I would challenge you on that one because uh, my friend Tom Allen 
was a very persuasive guy. Uh, you know, people talk about wrestlers being tough and, and they could take you down. This guy could verbally take down anybody, uh, anybody. Wow. He's a fascinating guy. I love that story. I love it. Talk with Larry Nugent, who will be inducted on Saturday, April 30th in the Oregon chapter uh, of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. You can be there, by the way. It's the 2016 Honors Banquet, Saturday, April 30th at the Embassy Suites Hotel, 9000 Southwest Washington Square in Tigard, Oregon. And uh, no host reception begins about 4 o'clock. Dinner and awards at 630. You can make your reservation online Please do so. Go to nwhof.org, uh, or go better yet, go to nwhof Oregon. Easy enough. Uh, if you have questions, make sure you call the National Wrestling Hall of Fame at their offices. Um, Larry, you're going in with an outstanding class, I think. Uh, and other inductees include Dale Freeman, Doug. Uh, is it Caffeo? It is. Okay, and Ron and Larice Oaks, uh, Rich Rowland. The Medal of Courage recipient this year, Mike Reuter, uh, Outstanding American, Dennis, uh, Dennis Overholzer. Uh, and again, all their plaques will be on permanent display at the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in Stillwater. What's neat about this, it's the first step to, to gain access, if you will, or to, to receive nominations and overall acceptance into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. But perhaps the greatest... Um, uh, recognition, the greatest salute is when it's your classmates and colleagues and fellow coaches and friends from the state where you made your mark, where you made your start. Would you say that's true? Well, yeah, you know, I, I don't know how interesting that is to people to have, uh, you know, people in the position like myself uh, uh, go back and talk about the minutia of, 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 of the things that motivated them throughout the rest of their lives. But it's the truth. Yeah, you're right. I think there's a lot of commonality, Larry, in what we do and sharing of those stories can only help reaffirm that we're on the right track. Uh, and perhaps that's the most impressive part to me is that every day we are searching for new and unique stories. And for some, they are very unique. But again, we find that commonality. It all comes back to the sport of wrestling. You've done your part to help grow the sport. As a matter of fact, when you took the job at Bethany College in Lindsborg, Kansas, your eye was to grow the sport through the men's program. And with the future looking very bright indeed to add a women's program, you're seeing women's programs grow across the country like crazy, aren't we? Absolutely. And we are, uh, we are on a, a path to uh, start a women's program at, at, at Bethany College. Uh, we've had several conference calls. It's going to be a conference sport, number one. There's 12 college wrestling programs in the state of Kansas. So uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. And uh, some of them have, have uh, just been birthed, and, and some of them have women's programs, and we will join that group. Uh, maybe it'll be a year, maybe two years, but it's, it's on its way. It's all about good funding, quality, long-term planning, uh, good stewardship, and the program that you currently coach, the men's program and the future women's program, should and could not have a greater steward than our good friend, our colleague, Larry Nugent. Larry, congratulations on a job well done uh, for being honored by your betters and your fellows. I think that's terrific. Uh, for the time you beat John Smith. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, what would you like to add? What would you like to tell those? Uh, first of all, there's a nominating team. Uh, there's There are those that put your name forward. Then, of course, those that vo vote for you and those that will show up to honor you. What would you like to say? Well, I have to, I have to recognize my high school coach, uh, uh, Jack Olson, he brought a, he broadened my horizons. He would bring in wrestlers that were from the outside that were really great from the University of Oregon and other places. Uh, my college coach, Bob Rehm, big influence on me. I wouldn't be here without him. Um, Mike Clock, who, you know, he's been kind of guiding me for a long time in and out of the different places that I've been. Uh, you know, Rich Bender, uh, great, great friend. And, and, and uh, now there's so many people. 
uh, when you get into a position like this that uh, you know, all my workout partners, you know, when you go back to that part of my life when I was competing, my brother Bill and my brother Dan and all my workout partners, Doug Samaron, who was he, we went all up and down the West Coast in the country, you know, together competing. And, uh, you know, uh, my wife, Carrie, who puts up with a really unreasonable amount of wrestling stuff. Um, I mean, it could go on forever. One of my favorite uh, conversations is always with my good friend Larry Nugent. It uh, absolutely is. I can remember us talking to the wee hours of the morning about wrestling, the best ways to market it, to promote it. And it continues uh, to this day at Bethany College in Lindsborg, Kansas. Larry, congratulations from all of us in wrestling. Uh, please keep up the good work, and we'll look forward to talking to you very soon. Thanks, Scott. My pleasure, really. The Nike Hot Seat has had a very special guest today indeed. Larry Nugent will be honored, a lifetime service to the sport of wrestling, and inducted into the Oregon chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame on Saturday, April 30th. Join us as we honor him and his fellows on this 2016 evening. It's April 30th at the NBC Suites in Tigard, Oregon. I'm Scott Casper, and thanks for watching.